Welcome to St. Luke's, where spirits come alive. It's a joy to have you worshiping with us in this season of Advent. I invite you to light a candle, or if you have an Advent wreath, you can gather that and prepare to light it as we light our Advent wreath in worship. You can also prepare the elements for Holy Communion as we celebrate the sacrament in the latter part of the service. We give thanks for all of the gifts and talents of those who make our worship video possible. Their names appear on the screen, and we give glory to God for their gifts. Please note our worship schedule for December, which appears on the screen. This will also appear at the end of the video where you can pause it and take any notes or information so you can contact the office or our website for further details. Advent means to arrive or to come. And in this season of waiting, we prepare for Christ to come anew in our lives, in Bethlehem, and at the end of time when all will be made right with Christ's second coming. Let us turn our hearts and our minds toward God. We begin in the name of God, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy God, come near and hear our cry. Save me, O God, for I sink in a deep mire where there is no foothold. I am weary. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. You know my folly. The wrongs I have done are not hidden from you. Do not let those who hope in you be put to shame. Do not let those who seek you be dishonored. Draw near to me, redeem me, set me free. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly and cry that you have served your term, your penalty is paid, you have received from the Lord's hand double for all your sins. In Jesus Christ, God comes into your life and your heart. You are forgiven and set free to live with hope. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Thank you. 
Let us pray together. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We enter this season full of longing and hope. We long to be restored, uplifted, comforted, for Jesus to enter the stable of our lives and world. We renew hope for ourselves and our future. We also long for the second coming of Christ, for Jesus to return and bring to us and all of creation to wholeness and peace. Lamentations chapter 3 offers us a vision of hope. But this I call to mind, and therefore have ho I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, as this Advent season begins, we cry out to you seeking hope. When everything else we rely on fails us, we hope in you. We can hope for better days because we trust you. We all have moments of overwhelm and moments of strong faith. Wherever we find ourselves today, remind us that because your steadfast love never ceases, our hope is always in you. Help us to keep our eyes and our hearts focused on the salvation that has come and will come again in Jesus Christ. Amen. reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brush, brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who was unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So this is my nativity set. I, I set this up every year. 
my parents had this nativity set when they were first married in 1960. Um, they put it up every year, so I've seen it every year as a child. So this year, as I set it up, something interesting happens. I don't know if you can see this, but this little price tag fell off the bottom of the donkey. And it says Woolworth and Company, 29 cents. So this tells me that at least the donkey in 1960 was 29 cents. So that being said, this first Advent Sunday, we are going to discuss the life of Mary. And so I'm going to put her right here so you can see her. So Mary was engaged to Joseph at the tender young age of 13. But before she got married to Joseph, God sent down the angel Gabriel to appear to her in the city of Nazareth. And Gabriel told her that she is blessed among women and that God has shown favor to her. He also told her that the Holy Spirit would come down upon her and that she would give birth to a son and that this son would be called Jesus and that the one that was to be born would be also called the son of God. So Mary who was regarded pretty much as a lowly maidservant, was rejoicing that God had chosen her to bestow this honor on, rather than someone higher standing in the community, maybe. But Mary knew that this honor was going to show all generations going forward just how blessed she was. So Mary is my idea of a very strong woman. Even so young, she was able to follow the request and, and, and be true to her faith and do what God asked of her. And she was definitely rewarded in her life by being the mother of Jesus. So one last thing I wanted to share with you is I have a lot of songs in my music collection, but arguably one of my most very favorite is titled Mary. And it's written by a wonderful folk artist and songwriter. Her name is Patty Griffin. And if you get a chance, you have time, it'd be good to download it or look it up on YouTube and listen to it. The lyrics are amazing and I, I think you'll really enjoy it. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give off its light, and the stars will be falling from the heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, 
Keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Wow. It is easy in 2020 to identify with the early followers of Jesus, with the disciples hearing these words of Jesus just before he was killed on the cross, and with the early Christians hearing these words after their temple in Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans in the year 70. They all experienced untold suffering. Suffering is indeed at hand for us, and its signs are everywhere. Many Christians today see apocalyptic signs all around us, a virus that has affected the entire globe, surging with new and deadly strength around us, wildfires, floods, superstorms, racial conflict, civil and political divisions, and even an infestation of murder hornets. To top it all off, the suspension of Christian worship as we know and love it. Our temples have not been physically destroyed as it was for the early believers, but we are experiencing the closest thing to it that we have ever known, the loss of our ability to gather and praise and sing together in our sanctuary, not just for a month, but now stretching on for nine months with not a clear ending date in sight. Yes, there is suffering. So much has been destroyed. It feels as if the sun has darkened and the moon will not give off its light and the stars are falling from the heavens, not to wish upon, but as if our very lives are being shaken from their foundations. This is how our Christian faith began, out of death and destruction, out of the crucible of suffering, under the merciless power of oppressors and the loss of all that was familiar. This is how our Advent this year begins, in death and destruction, in the crucible of suffering, and under the overpowering sense of loss of so much that is familiar, accompanied by the sadness of what we hoped might be. With astonishing precision, Jesus describes our experience 2,000 years later, and our ancient forebears feel as familiar as first cousins. Like them, we hear these words of what is happening in the world God made, and we must admit this is not the advent that we want. This reality makes us want to run under the covers and get up when it is all over. Maybe that is why the night before Christmas has that line about, I and my kerchief and Ma in her cap were both settled down for a long winter's nap. That is what we all want, to slumber through the rest of winter and wake up when new life appears in the spring. We want Christ to come now and make things right. We do not want just the babe in Bethlehem, but we want Christ to come in all his fullness and set the whole world into union to place the whole cosmos back into order so that every suffering and all out of joint systems would work in harmony and all power would be in balance and all nations would worship God our King and come to the light of Christ our Lord. That is our cosmic desire hidden in our Advent longing. That 
is our deepest desire beyond our prayer to return to the sanctuary that Christ would return in all his fullness and all of his glory. Well, this truly is the promise of Advent, that Christ will return and restore the whole creation. That is our constant hope. But until that time, and Jesus makes clear that none of us knows the day or the hour, not even him, we continue to live with this kind of hope that Jesus calls us to. Christ is still risen from the dead. That has not changed. Christ is still victorious over sin. That has not changed. Christ has still conquered the devil. That has not changed. Christ still fills us with the Holy Spirit, which is not bound by time or place or even building to get us ready for that great and cosmic day. So Jesus says, get ready, wait, watch, work. Jesus calls us to remain alert and engaged and not let disillusionment or evil take over our spirits, our church, or our communities. Over and over in the Gospels, Jesus calls us, his disciples, to pay attention. Ongoing crises may tempt us to slumber or distraction, but four times in our gospel reading, Jesus calls us, like the disciples, to keep awake. Jesus implores us to stay spiritually alert, working with him for good and for grace as we prepare for his return. So get ready, wait, watch, work. We wait with anticipation for Christ's return. We watch so that those with destructive intent cannot sow evil and thwart God's purposes of justice and love. We work with the expectation of seeing Christ show up in our daily life, in our family, in our neighbors, and those in need. We counter evil with good, with our words, and our actions. We wait, we watch, and we work with the tools and the resources that we have to embody the fullness of God's grace and forgiveness here and now, building or no building. You know, the Church of Jesus Christ grew and came to us 2,000 years later without any buildings to start with. That's the power of the Holy Spirit, which uses people and bodies and mouths, not buildings, to spread the good news of God's love in Christ Jesus. God uses you and me in our daily life as we wait and watch and work. We are diligent then in our prayer and our Bible reading so that we do not become complacent. We worship by video and by Zoom regularly. We listen to praise and worship music often. And we do those things that nourish our body and soul with commitment as we wait and watch and work with Christ so that when the end comes, whether it is the end of COVID or the end of time, we are spiritually ready and stronger than when we started. There is a gospel song <clears throat> that says, God is preparing me for something I can't handle yet. St. Luke's Christ is preparing us for ministry, for growth, for outreach, which we are not ready for yet. But as we use this time to prepare, to get ready, as we wait and watch and work together, we will be ready for the future that Christ is preparing for us. 
Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon is drawing nigh. A pray and watch and wrestle, me. Our creed today is based on the second reading appointed for the first Sunday of Advent from 1 Corinthians. Let us proclaim our faith together. God has given us grace in Christ Jesus, enriching us in speech and knowledge of every kind. The testimony of Christ has also been strengthened among us that we are not lacking in any spiritual gift as we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen us to the end, so that we may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him we are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with our prayers of intercession. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. God of eternity, help us to prepare for your kingdom with patient waiting, attentive watching, and faithful working. Fill us with your spirit that we might resist the temptation to slip into complacency, lazy slumber, and distraction, and instead, Use the gifts and tools we have to build your kingdom of love and justice on earth. Enable us to live with hope as we look toward the completion of your will when Christ returns to place the whole cosmos back in divine order. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of tenderness, draw near with your healing touch to all those who are suffering pain or illness of any kind. Grant your presence and comfort to those who turn to you for relief and give your strength to all who care for others in distress. Bless those close to us, especially Bill, Shirley, Bob, and Martha, Billy Jr. and Sr., Carol, Rita, Ed, Annie, B, Bob, Kevin, Linda, Steve, Joe, Carolyn, Aileen, Carol, and those we name aloud, or in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of every day, as we withdraw again back into our homes to protect ourselves and others, make yourself known to us in the details of our daily life. Give us a sacramental awareness of your presence in all things. Make our washing a baptismal remembrance, our meals a communion of gratitude, our laundry a folded stack of prayers our Zoom meetings, an offering of safety for others, our walks, 
the embrace of wonder in creation, and our rest, a surrender to your divine will. Help us to accept what we cannot control and manage what we can with peace. We pray for a communal desire to care for the common good, safety for our children, youth, and the elderly, protection for all who work in health care, and civility in our public discourse. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is dying that we are born to eternal life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of the risen Christ be with you always and also with you. You may share the peace of Christ with those in your household or hold the peace of Christ in your heart. We continue with the offering. We prepare for Christ's coming by building up the kingdom of God as we share our faith with gifts of time, talent, and treasure. Thank you for supporting God's work through the mission of St. Luke's. Let us pray together. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may lift up your bread or wine and juice at the words of institution. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may share communion with those in your household or give it to yourself with the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. And may may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love, serve, and welcome all. Thanks be to God, and we will.